Well, 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 look who's here. Yep, that's me, people. This is Greg, a.k.a. Crazy G for NECR New England Concert Reviews. Today, as always, we have another outstanding artist, and she is vocalist and bass player Paz Lenshantin from the alt-rock band The Pixies. Hey there, welcome, and thanks for taking a few to speak with us here at NECR. How has life been treating you? Walk, walk. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> oh, life's been pretty good. You know, I can't complain. I'm here in Southern California, sunny Southern California, on a little break before our next leg. And in between our next leg from now and then, we're playing a show in Dana Point, which is a really fun surf spot that I've been surfing at for a while. And I'm really looking forward to that little festival on the 8th. And then we're back on the road all over the states again which is kind of my favorite way to tour sometimes you know it's it's just nice to be in the usa yes it is you mentioned the tour we're going to get into that we're going to get into a few other things right now let's start it off with as one of the newest members of the pixies why don't you tell us a little bit about your background and how your opportunity to become part of this band came about well the way i see it is i like to be around time travelers See, I feel at home when I'm around people where time is kind of irrelevant. And uh, about two decades ago, I got a phone call from Joey Santiago in about, I don't know, maybe uh, 1996 or 7. And he was looking for a bass player to tour with his side project, the Martinis, uh, with his wife at the time, Linda. And I was just a kid in L.A. Uh, that was a bass player, but I've never even gone out of L.A. yet. It was before a perfect circle before any anything I've ever done in the future. Got a call from Joey Santiago of the Pixies. Wow. And of course, I listened to his record and learned the songs and I did my first little tour outside of LA with the Martinis. It was about a week tour and up to maybe Portland, just up the coast of California and maybe to Portland there. And then uh, when we came back, I didn't uh, talk to Joey again until two decades later when I got another phone call. And us travelers, see, us time travelers, Time, again, is real. it was like the next day he called me, you know. But yeah, in Earth times, it was two decades. And he was looking for a bass player for the Pixies. And so he gave me a bunch of songs to learn. And I learned the songs. And the next thing you know, I'm traveling all over the world as a member of the Pixies. That is so cool. And I got to agree with you. I, I love being around. I'm the same way. I got to be honest with you. Yes, I follow a schedule. But it, it's weird because... I I really don't. Time doesn't... <laughs> It, it doesn't exist so for me. So you're one of us. Yes. You're one of us. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, that's good to know, Greg. Uh, you're so right, though, and it, it, that's such a cool story. The biography on the newest CD of the Pixies called Head Carrier is ever-encompassing with its summation of this CD. What would you like to tell us about Head Carrier from your perspective? Well, my perspective is I'm the only one in the band that it's my first Pixies record. And so I think the energy of that, I'm sure for them too, is exciting, you know, to have new people on the record. We had Tom Delgetti as the producer, pause me playing the bass and singing. And I even got to, I also wrote a song, co-wrote a song with Black Francis, which I think came out quite lovely, a little, I guess the difference maybe between me and for the past four years, all I've really listened to is the Pixies, you know, for the past four years, I mainly listening has been the Pixies to really uh, capture the essence um, live and I wanted to dedicate most of my time to make sure that I had every note every you know I, I wanted to do it exactly like the record so you can imagine I listened to the Pixies quite a bit in the past four years and so come to the writing to me I was I felt very fluent and so the song all, all I think about now may, may have that kind of classic Pixie sound maybe due to the fact that it's been uh, such a journey and uh, live and listening that um, it was it was kind of 
like a part of me. That makes perfect sense. We're going to touch upon the track, and uh, I also want to get into something a little bit later when they officially welcome you. But I, I, to me, this CD is different, but the same in the sound and style of the Pixies, if that makes any sense. And it's more than obvious with both. The self-titled track, Head Carrier, is a dark, sultry song. What would you like to tell us about that particular track? Well, I'm not sure what the question is, you know. Um, originally, the album, we were I had a working title. And uh, originally, we were going with cephalophore, which means head carrier. And uh, I think as far as lyrically, that is way more of a question for Black Francis than myself. I would not uh, do it justice if I told you what the song <laughs> lyrically was about. Do you think that as the question was that you know this to me in my estimation the CD is different but it's the same in the sound and style of the Pixies so I guess what I'm asking is do you think that it kind of carries over into the self-titled track of Head Carrier. Oh, are you saying it's almost like the track is somewhat talking about the album? Yes, exactly. Oh, no. I like you thinking about it, you know. I like, you know, sometimes I, you know, I think it's best just to let people interpret things, but definitely was that was not the intention. Cool. All I think about now could be, for a lack of a better phrase, your initiation into the Pixies. Can you Tell us the story a little deeper behind the birth of this song and what did it what did it actually mean for you to being instantly thrown into this and being able to put your uh, spin on it on a particular track. Well, all of the other songs had a lot of pre-production. We were in pre-production in Toronto for a couple of weeks, making a demo, writing some songs. That's when we met Tom, the new producer, Del Getty, who came to visit us in Toronto, and we had a nice dinner. We already knew he was a great producer, and when we got along with him, we thought, definitely, this is going to be fun. And so then we did our second round of pre-production in Bath, England, where we revisited all the demos, flushed them out a little bit more, and kept writing another maybe half a dozen songs or so so it's in total we had almost like 20 songs to bring to record something like that and so by the time we were at rack studio london we had a little apartment uh there like a house that was adjacent to the studio where we got to you know hang out listen to music make some food make coffee in the morning be a family together and less about you know uh, clocking in your time and showing we know no, it's like we wake up we make coffee and we hang out we listen to music and we uh, play a little guitar and we share more things and, and that kind of relaxed we were all pretty relaxed because we were very rehearsed and ready for recording so we knew the songs and it wasn't gonna you know we're just going in and playing the songs and so we had some extra time you know to uh, fool around with some other ideas and uh, Black Francis came up with a song that he shared with me and inspired me to come Come up with a song as well and that's when all I think about now was conceived it was very very at the very end of our time at back so we only had a couple of more days left when the song kind of appeared and when it did musically I made a little demo and Black Francis heard the demo thought it had some je ne sais quoi about it seemed special and he said Paz you should you know you should sing on this record uh, or on this on this track uh, like this should be your song that you sing and I said well I didn't I didn't expect that okay uh, well if I'm gonna sing on that I said please could you write the lyrics since he is an incredible lyricist and he said okay I'll write the lyrics but what do you want to sing about and you know there was this great moment that I'll never being time travelers you do also have to remember time and this is definitely a time to remember where I've been asked by Black Francis what I pause Lynch on 10 wanted to sing on the next page Pixies record. What a moment, you know. So, of course, how did I get to this moment? And the first, like a lightning bolt, was Kim. Uh, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Kim. So I, I would pay tribute, like with a thank you letter to her for basically passing on the, the baton, the torch.
torch onto me. Uh, so that's the song, All I Think About Now, music by me, written by, lyrics by Black Francis. Of course, there is a silent moment there. Uh, uh, you know, I told him, if it's too much, don't worry. And he said, no, no, this is perfect. He went upstairs and, and uh, stayed up all night. And next morning, we were recording it. Totally cool. Another crazy track is Um Chaga Laga. Um Chaga Laga. Um Chaga Laga. It is a great track. I absolutely... Yeah, one of my favorites of the record. What? I mean, I know you, again, you know, getting back to the self-titled track, Head Carrier, you know, as you mentioned, Black Francis did a lot of this. But when you first heard this track and or learned of it, what did you really think of it? Were you like, wow, this is a really good track? Yeah, I think that one, uh, more than the other ones, was like straight off the bat, you know, Black Francis came in, had a riff, we all played it, and it's pretty much exactly how we first did it when we first heard it, you know, it was one of those like classic sounding songs that is like, okay, let's do this. I mean, you know, we changed a little thing here and there, was a call and response timing or something, but yeah, immediately, I think that might have been like the first song we, as a group, played together for the consideration of writing the next record and stuck around, you know, and it was lack of a better word, no brainer, you know, it was just sounded great from the start, didn't really need much of a, too much thinking involved in it, you know, it was, right. it was just great from the beginning. Yeah, and it is, it's a, I had to play it like three or four times, I was like, wow, this is a really cool track. Yeah, I like that one. The Pixies have been on a 2017 North American tour, basically a three-leg tour you've been on. The April May leg was sold out and you the band just wrapped up the UK European tour as well. The band's five week North American leg two is set to kick off on September 19th in New Haven, Connecticut. Leg three launches on November 30th with three shows in Portland, Oregon and we will see the band making stops along the North American West Coast. How has it been thus far and what would you like to tell us about this tour? Well I could tell you about the tour we just came from. The UK tour was really fun. Uh, the, one of some of the highlights playing Hyde Park in London. Wow, what a what a scene. It was amazing that they can curate a festival in the middle of London like that. It's uh, it was an honor to play that. Um, another highlight, uh, co-headlining with PJ Harvey. That was really fun. Really beautiful. She's amazing. What an inspiration and talent. Then we played in an incredible amphitheater in Israel uh, that was built in 25 BC which was that was an incredible spot there uh, we went to Finland for the first time and uh, really enjoyed that festival the air the people I'm always so amazed now with festivals how organized everything is and peaceful and most of these festivals now in Europe they're mainly uh, for families you know it's like their family outing and uh, so a lot of kids you know all ages but I'm looking forward to the North American legs we have a couple of more I mean, there's a couple of bands that are on the road. One uh, really cool band, if it's a new band, if y'all uh, should check them out. They're called Sextile. They're out on the road, and they just missed the hurricane. They were in the hurricane in Texas. Now they're out on the East Coast. You should check it out. Yeah, definitely. Anyway, so yeah, things have been good, and we're looking forward to next year. Uh, I think we're going to get back on the writing board, uh, maybe doing a few more shows here and there, but definitely more writing, and things are functioning and working and I know that Pixies have gone through a transition and losing a crucial member and dealing with all of the you know um, the transition of everything but I think now we're, we're at a good place and we're in a functional productive and strong place and I'm happy to be a part of it yes the Pixies seem stronger for some reason I don't know what it is I'm not saying it's any one thing well, in I do know I do know that our shows you know since I've been in the band and you know I know that I was uh, a new member so of course I have something to do with maybe why there was some shakiness here and there but uh, the last tour I was just blown away on you know as trying to look at it objectively you know putting myself in the audience and going wow we're we're sounding pretty good <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, it sounds pretty, pretty good. And, you know, without a set list and everything, keeps us on our toes. Sometimes, you know, am I going to remember a song we haven't played in two years? Sure enough, it, you know, I remember them and it's really fun to pull out some old songs that aren't always in rotation. Other than what we discussed, Paz, is there anything else about the Pixies you'd like to share and or tell us that we might not know about? You no, know, I don't know how to answer that question. If I knew what you didn't know, then maybe it'd be easier. <laughs> Uh, you know this has been one fun interview with you today and it really has i'm glad to hear it bassist vocalist poslin shantan for the legendary alt rock band the pixies i thank you so much i wish you the best i wish you the best with the band the new cd head carrier the tour everything i hope the best for you Thanks so much, Greg. Welcome back. <laughs> and Thanks so much. Uh, you're welcome. And hopefully we'll talk uh, again soon. Okay. All right. Bye bye now. Bye bye. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the bassist vocalist for the iconic alt rock band, the Pixies, Poslin Shantan. I am, once again, Greg, aka Crazy G, for NECR New England concert reviews. And that's going to wrap another one up. I'll be back with more. Be good. Be safe. And I am out of here. Later. Peace.